to a very special episode of Table Talk. We are here at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills, and we're here because of this man, Douglas Booth. Hello. Uh, hey, Douglas. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you. Nice to meet touched you. Touched him. Whoa. Touched him, and you're jealous now. Mm -hmm. Joe, can I touch you, man? Yes, you can. There you go. Cool. I didn't know why you were cool. touching, man. I was like, what's going on? Well, we were just shaking <laughs> hands. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing other things under the table to Joe, but okay. you don't have to worry about that right now. Mm -hmm. So you guys know how the show works, um, but forget about that stuff. Douglas Booth here is from the new movie Noah uh, from Darren Aronofsky, and this is very exciting because I saw the movie yesterday. Did you? Yes, epic, huge, crazy, awesome, mm -hmm. uh, incredible cast. Incredible. Like, cast. Were you fanboying boy the whole time that you were working? I mean, there were moments, kind of in the in the sort of fight scene, the battle scene, where when you're up there on the arc and Russell's like doing his thing, and I grew up watching Gladiators. So there were moments where I was just like, okay, now I'm, this is strange. <laughs> I have a job to do. I have a job to do. Yes. <gasps> yeah. So when Russell Crowe's really killing people up on the arc, right? Those people were just dying for real. I mean, those, those, are, those, are, those are some. Tell you what, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's they, very method. Yeah, 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 he's very method. He's very method. Like that. <laughs> I'm not doing this unless I'm really killing a man. <laughs> There it goes. No more table talk sign. Okay, so um, let's jump right into the questions here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out some topics. Okay. We're going to see how it goes. We're just going to get all loosey-goosey. Our fans sent these in. Loosey. And loosey-goosey. <laughs> loosey-goosey is like, we're going to let yeah. We're going to chill out. We're not going to be uptight okay. here. We're like, just going to dance yeah. a little bit. This isn't a courtroom. This is, we're no, not going to. Yeah. on. No one's on trial here. <laughs> uh, Lisa Phillips from the Twitter says, uh, what was the craziest experience on the set? Mm. The craziest experience. I mean, the rain was pretty crazy. They built one of the most high-tech rain systems that's ever been built for film. There was thousands and thousands of sprinklers they had, which which were all on like big, big, big bay cranes above the set, and every single sprinkler was could be controlled. So this iPad, and they could make each one do different stuff. It could be mist, could be heavy droplets, light droplets. Oh, crazy! Whoa. So and they would drop five thousand gallons of water a minute. Oh my god! So it was, was it being recycled? Do we have a drought yeah, in they California? Had, they actually did the way they they had to they built the arc on that on that spot for six months and they built in draining systems so that the water would drain away and then they'd collect it into tanks and then I guess they'd have to clean it because it was covered in dirt. Yeah. Did you ever think about like maybe peeing into the system and going like, ha ha, now my pee's coming out? All the time. All the time. <laughs> well, I, I, the thing, well, I was always running off just to the bushes to pee. Like, it, 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 all the water's draining somewhere. It's already up in the system. It's going down in Emma Watson's head. I mean, really <laughs> gotcha, Emma! I couldn't uh, imagine like a more miserable way to act than just to be constantly wet. Yeah, what's that like? Yeah, being no, just it was, wet it was the difficult. Whole time. Cool. And especially because, well, we started filming in the summer in New York, and it was like deathly hot. Ray Winston nearly fainted during a wow. scene. But by the end, it was just cold. We, it was so, so cold. It was snowing, and yeah, your, your fingers would go blue, and it was really cold. Wow. Did you ever have those high-tech suits underneath that keep you warm yeah, or whatever? They keep you like warm. They say thermal. they keep you warm. But did they try to do those? I mean, yeah, you could. we could have decide to have thermals, but for me, I felt... As soon as you put like another layer underneath, unless it was completely watertight, which they don't really do, then you're just completely wet. It sticks <laughs> you to just you. have the water underneath. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a big squishy yeah, water yeah. balloon yeah. wonder. Exactly. Just a bunch of otters acting. <laughs> big shells up on it. I'd love right. to just drain a wrist out and just pull the water out. <laughs> Fun Fun the one. Some of this is pee. All right, from uh, Michael Caruli asks, what is something you've always wanted to do in your life but haven't gotten around to it yet? Um, skydive. Ooh. That's fun. It's fun. Travel around India. I wanted to do that. Um, I haven't done that one. Mm -hmm. um, Worked with Darren Aronofsky until I did that. Um, oh, so, dude. Yeah, but that was that was. But I managed. I don't know how. Somehow pulled that one off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scarier than skydiving. Probably. Yeah. Let's jump working into that for a second. Though working with Darren because you know visionary, top of his game. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Walking into set knowing that he was going to tell you what to do. Yeah, I mean, people people ask me if I was nervous because you know you're working with Darren Aronofsky with Russell Crowe, Jennifer Connelly, Anthony Hopkins, all these people. We, and I said no. I said the 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 higher class of people you have, the better the director, the better the actors. The less nervous I am because you're in safe hands. That's you true. Yeah. You're in a shield. I'm nervous. Because I'm actors. going into a place that I'm like I'm not sure how these guys know what they're doing. Then I'm nervous because I feel mm. lost and you feel like. You're drowning in it. But and I know for us, like if we would have walked on that set with Hopkins and Winstone and, and Crow, it would be like after I'm done cleaning up the vomit <laughs> every <laughs> day, then then let's 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 call action now. Yeah, it's yeah. like I'm working with Jennifer Carly. Oh, that's so awesome. We need some sprinkler. <laughs> Turn them on, please. I'm covered. What's he like, Darren Aronofsky? Amazing. Yeah? He's an incredible guy off set and then on set. He's so focused. He's so focused. He knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's 
he's a true visionary. Mm. And he's an actor's director, which is amazing for us actors. Yeah, I mean, every movie he's ever directed, you just get this like incredible performance out of everybody. It's yeah. just this magic that not many directors have, I think. Yeah, he can get under your skin. Yeah. He's never more than 10, unless he's doing a big, big, big shot where he's got to kind of be coordinating all this stuff. He's never more than five, 10 feet away from you. He's got his monitor here and he's just doing this. He's like, <laughs> he's making sure it's yeah, all he's everything. He's just he just watches everything, and then he comes down, and then he was come and whisper. You can be totally lost in the scene. He'll come and whisper something in your ear, and it just completely makes sense. Mm -hmm. He's always like, no, no, no. He doesn't want some actors to hear. So, say you're Russ and you're Jennifer, and I'm we're doing a scene together. He'll be like, no, guys, you can't hear. <laughs> you can't hear <laughs> character. Hello, how are you, Jennifer? I'm fine, thank you. Shh, I'm talking to Jennifer. <laughs> I was yeah, in, that I was was in labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so he yeah. But basically, what I was saying was that he, it, you know, he would want us to have a note, and then he'd give you a different note. So we're all playing off different things. Oh, yeah, so it's, cool. He plays everyone off each other in within the scene. Allows there to be some an anticipation and fun. And, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want the other actor to know what you're doing. So you sound kind of like a little bit of a thrill seeker because you said you want to skydive. Like, I is suppose that... so. I like, yeah, I like, I like, you know, adrenaline-filled things. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. I'm a little terrified of all that stuff. No, you but wouldn't do any of that. No, I don't want to do that. Jump in at the all. next one. Please. <laughs> Don't make me skydive ever, please. <laughs> um, Alice Anthony, that's a strange name for a person. Is it? Is it? No, probably not. Know. That's uh, not. incredibly normal, actually. <laughs> Which is a very normal name. I think you just stroked for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you read a different name in your mind. It's for Nicola from Nap Nap. It does say bibbly babbly boop, doesn't it? Uh, Alice Anthony says, what other bit? I guess I. It, it kind of freaks me out because it's two name. It's like two first names. Alice and, oh. and one female, one male. Yeah, right it's Alice and Anthony. Yeah, exactly. See, or that's John where Jay. my brain's coming from. That's fine. All right. But what I love your name. <laughs> you, have a, you have a wonderful name. Can I just say they're both great names? Put them together. A little weird for me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what other biblical stories other than Noah's Ark do you think might be good for film? Hmm. I'd like to see Al Pacino play King Herod. Ooh. That would be good. Anything. I think he almost was. I remember I read a th I read a film. I can't remember what it was. A long time ago, and he was going to play Herod. But I want. But what he was like a secondary character, and it never happened. But can you imagine like a film about him mm. playing Herod? That would That's be dark. That's epically awesome. I've always thought because. And Darren should direct it. In, in yeah, the, he should just start directing like, everything. I was thinking after, the Bible well, by the way. I was thinking, I was like, the this, if, if they're making a sequel to Noah, it's got to keep going through the Bible, right? Like, why don't they just just get They just call it the Ark Part 2 and it's got nothing. It's for the, <laughs> yeah. And the DVD <laughs> set is the Bible that you open up yeah. and each like uh -huh. each chapter. Yeah, anyways. This I, one's about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, but it's called Noah Part 3. <laughs> that's really strange. I always liked the idea of Samson and Delilah. I always wanted to see that turn into a big oh, uh, that's cool. Hollywood epic. Yeah. The power of the hair, man. Yeah, I like that. The hair man, the hair comma man. The hair man. Yeah. Was that someone in the Bible? There we go. Get that last one. <laughs> Get that last one. Um, well, forget about what I want to see. I oh. want to see the Re the book of Revelations, because when I was a kid, it terrified that. That's like of every me. movie since Armageddon. No, no one's ever done like the sun going into the ocean and nine-headed dragons and stuff. I like, seen it. Dude, I mean, it's crazy. It was like straight to TV. I hope we don't okay. get to see it. That'd be terrifying. Uh, Anakin Zuliaka, that's a cool name because that's a Star Wars reference, says, I'm about to go camping and go to Disney in Florida. Do you guys have any funny camping stories? I mean, on set, they would, Russell would sometimes camp out because we were filming in Iceland. Sometimes it was, we were so far out of Reykjavik, you either had to drive hours or get a helicopter. So he would just, he would stay in his trailer or camp on the beach. So him and Darren slept, slept on, good job. <laughs> I hit the mic. Yeah. I hope there's a sound. Try and do that again. You won't be able to nope, do that. No, I sure won't. Um, yeah, so they would sometimes camp out on the beach and, and it, sometimes it was so windy. I think Russell at one point thought he was going to be like blown into the sea. He's like... His, his camper van started like doing this. I love that Russell Crowe's option is either camping or a helicopter. <laughs> it's one of the two yeah. here. I'd like to camp. I don't want to get in a helicopter. I'm scared. So you, you don't even do helicopters? Well, I don't know, man. I'm barely getting into planes now. Really? So I'm barely yeah. getting into planes. And helicopters just seem more terrifying to me because it's very isolated and it's only like three people. And but you, but you love, do you like scary films? Yeah, I love scary films. Do you love being, see, I don't like, see, I... I find that I get very anxious. Interesting. But I but I would love to be scared like physically. Wow. You guys should get together and go skydiving and on the the way up watch a scary movie. While we're skydiving. Let's all let's go. Ah, don't cover your eyes. Talk about Iceland though, where you guys were shooting. That had to have been just beauty beyond belief. It was incredible. Yeah, it was stunning. You on the way to set, you passed like three amazing waterfalls. You, it was yeah, it was breathtaking. 
and uh, and it's a country where um, over like three quarters of the population believes in trolls and goblins. Whoa! Yeah. I need to go there. <laughs> I knew they'd like that. Did you see any trolls or goblins? No, but after, if you move, because obviously we're working outside all the time, and you know, if you moved a rock or if you disturbed something, you'd have to pray to the, you'd, or you'd have to sort of like send like a spiritual message to the troll. Wow. I can so get on board with that. Yeah. Oh my god. They, they say it when you're flying in on like Icelandic Air on the TV in front of you, it's like it gives you all these facts. It's like three quarters of the population believe in trolls. Um, 100% of the population believe in fairies. It's like, it's literally, it's like, wow. it's amazing. It's like, where am I going? This place is cool. Can I just hire a little person to dress up like a goblin and then bring them into, and, and then just like scare people? Like, here's 50 bucks, go run around. All you have to do is believe. <laughs> exactly. Just maybe, run. maybe, but then the real fairies might get pissed off. That's so. true, then, they'll, then I'll get some sort of weird curse you, or something. Yeah, you're gonna get some weird, you won't never leave the island. Yeah, and I'll be like a frog forever yeah. or something. That wouldn't yeah. be so bad. If I was a frog, I didn't have to pay taxes. <laughs> just, just true. Yeah, I'm sure there's. I'm, I'm sure frogs have to pay tax, so you know the pike comes they have along. To pay, yeah, they have to pay fly, or uh, pay fly taxes. Yeah. All right, want to do one more? Should we do the last one? Yeah, let's or do the last one. one. Oh, so this will be a fun one to end on. Uh, from Georgia Boone, if all animals were dying on Earth and you had to save one species, what would it be and why? That's a big responsibility, dude. Yeah, I can't choose. I mean, there's millions of types of species. I, mm -hmm. I can. What would yours? What would yours like, be? Like we have. That was a terrible shot. I know, dude. Come on, man. Usually, let's get out of here, Joe. Let me finish this up. No, let me uh, come back and answer. I'll tell you what it is. It's no! A, it's cow. It's steak. Well, I you, saved well, the hold steak. Hold on a second, right. Mr. Meat Eater over here, Mr. Man. But then you take it on the ark and eat it, then it's, you haven't saved it. That's true! If it, d I'm saving it for a later date. I'm letting it age a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna eat old cow? There's gotta be something gross about that. I don't that. eat meat, so... That well, that's the thing, oh. you gotta think about, like, an animal that would be the most beneficial to society. Horse. Like, a species. Well, but I mean, we've got cars, what else do we need a horse but for? Mm. We gotta think about, like, modern times. Like, what's something, what's an animal, like, maybe, like, um, maybe bees. Like, bees carry pollen and they pollinate Isn't flowers. Isn't a scary fact that if you wiped out bees, the world would end in eight days? Yeah, well, I think if you... Is, that's, like, that to me is scary. It's terrifying, right? And aren't we killing bees with our cell phones That's Aronofsky's movie on Revelations. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It all starts with bees. Uh, but no, I mean, like, you're right. With I cell think, phones? But I think, I think if you wiped out any species, like, even... Well, everything's like, connected. Yeah, yeah. We'd, I mean, we'd be screwed. I'm, it's hard to choose one that I... Would save, but the one that I wouldn't save is mosquitoes. Oh sure. yeah, forget mosquitoes. Yeah, I'm on that I don't think anything, anything, I don't think anything relies on them. Well, and also, and yeah, what's the thing. what's the importance of a mosquito? Because all they do is they really just spread like disease, spread disease, right? disease malaria. Yeah, I think the world would be a be much better place. Yeah. Without Plus, mosquitoes. I mean, can you imagine all those pokey, itchy things? Listen to us, scientists. Get it done. Get rid yeah. of the yeah. mosquitoes. Get rid of the mosquitoes already. Do what are you waiting for? Okay, so that's that's all the time we have for this. But real quick, uh, tell the people why they should go see Noah. Yeah, please. I mean, you should go see Noah because it's rare for a studio to give um, a director as wonderful as Dan Aronofsky who directs like pretty much art house movies yeah. and give him a budget like this to make a film that's not only epic but that's profound and has a like an interesting me message and provokes conversation. Dude, I loved the message so much. I thought it was so great. Like you put religion aside and you put all these kind of mm -hmm. like yeah. the the, um, the kind of controversial yeah. stuff aside. It's just a it's great a good story. message. It's a great. Story, yeah. yeah, I dig it. Well, thank you, dude. Well, so much guys, for coming. Time. Uh, Such a pleasure. Thanks for hanging. You guys, go check out the movie. Uh, check out Douglas Boo. Thank you for hanging March out. March twenty eighth. No, it comes out March twenty eighth. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And if you plan on seeing it, go see it. And if you don't plan on seeing it, go see it. And then I'm go see it again. <laughs> and then go see it again. And then take your friends and your mom and your dad and your brother and take your animals if they let you in the theater with them. Don't take a don't baby there because of the theater. Don't take your animals in the theater. What if it's a service animal? Hey guys, I'm Joe Beretta and I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm Douglas Booth. I'm Douglas Booth! We love you, buddy! Wanna hang out? Yeah, let's okay. do it. <laughs> <laughs>